Right now, there's definitely a street food revolution going on. People used to think of trailers as just sort of grubby food that you would grab, but it has really turned into a sophisticated part of our food culture now. Some of the best creative, innovative food is coming out of tiny little kitchens on four wheels. Red velvet pancake bites. Fries on the sandwich. Waggy beef slider. Beef tongue taco. Top flight burger. Not everyone can afford to open a restaurant. That's why we opened a street cart to begin with. So it allows these people with some great ideas, great recipes, to serve food to the public and do it in a really open, communal way. Cool. Twitter and other social media has totally changed food trucking. With one tweet, you've now reached 2,000 followers. It is definitely a food truck revolution. New York is definitely one of the best food truck or food cart cities. In a lot of ways, it's the birthplace of street food in the U.S. My name is Dave Venley, and uh, with my brothers Brian and Jesse and our partner Peter, we opened the Cluxco Carne Asada cart in uh, Soho, downtown Manhattan. Our model here on Cluxco is we like all our flavors to be really bright. Whenever we're cooking or whenever I'm cooking at home, I pretty much just kick up everything a little too far. <laughs> the Calexico card is, you could almost call them one of the original hipster vendors almost. I mean, these young guys from Southern California moved out to New York and were like, there's no good Mexican food here. These are our roll quesadillas, which are pretty much like traditional quesadillas, except uh, to save some space in this really small flat top, we roll it over an extra time and tuck it almost like a burrito. Not everyone can afford to open a restaurant. That's why we opened a street cart to begin with. So it allows these people with some great ideas, great recipes to serve food to the public and, and do it in a really open communal way. I've been coming here once a week. I come either before 12 o'clock or after 2.30, 3 o'clock and there's no lines. But if you come here right at like 1, 2, the line goes right around the block. Pretty quickly, we got a bunch of fans and that gave us a bunch of opportunities where we opened a restaurant down in Brooklyn. Right now, there's definitely a uh, street food revolution going on in cities like Los Angeles and Austin and Portland. And there's a bunch of cities around the country right now that are just producing some really cool food off tiny kitchens on the street. Portland's a great food city. Well, the majority of the food trucks in Portland are parked on surface parking lots around the city, usually closest to where people work, office buildings, or where people drink, bars. So they generally follow the basic biorhythms of life. Roast beef. Hey, we're big ass sandwiches. Big ass sandwiches, what they do is really interesting, you know, because they're not doing your typical chicken salad sandwiches. Yeah. It's not really Come servable. On, man. Look at this. Look at that. Look at that. <laughs> something that's elevated, something that's using good ingredients. When I was a little kid, I used to put french fries on all my sandwiches and stuff, and Lisa said, oh, that's a great idea. We should put french fries on our sandwiches. And it's kind of a big ass sandwich. What would you name that? And she kind of looked right at me and said, big ass sandwiches. <laughs> Fries on the sandwich. Right. Big ass sandwich. <laughs> okay, so this is the roast beef Somebody Caesar sandwich. A little pinch of the salt. Dude. Let that do its thing for a little while. Homemade Caesar. Right. Uh, the roast beef. People get to choose what meat they want. Roast beef is the most popular. Yeah. Throw a bit of the romaine over the top. A little pinch of that. Can't ever have enough cheese. And then of course, the french fries. And that is a roast beef Caesar sandwich. This isn't your old Roach Coach. This is the Nouveau food trucks. And in Los Angeles, where everything is drivable and nothing is walkable, it's really great to be able to walk out your front door of your office building, your house, and you have a huge array of food to choose from right there. Well, in the state of California, every truck has to park on a commissary every night. There, they get the truck cleaned all the way through. So when the operators come back in to start business for the next day, the truck is like a brand new truck. I'm Chad Punier. I'm David Punier. And we're the owners of the Vizi truck. 
In the morning, we basically set up. We arrive at the commissary probably like around 7.30 in the morning. Yeah, we take inventory. We uh, see what we need out of the commissary. We're going to go walk in, grab some of our supplies. Everything that we need is at the commissary. It's kind of where we store all of our goods, whether it's our, our meats, our produce, kitchenware, or silverware, or beverages. We serve uh, California coastal cuisine. It has a little bit of a flair from the Pacific Northwest. That's where I was trained. The ingredients are all local, fresh and as organic as possible. We use high quality meats. We use a Wagyu beef, we use a Jidori chicken. And it's something that you would typically find in like higher quality restaurant, but we definitely want to bring it to the street. We got to make sure the uh, water tank is filled up, propane's filled up, drinks are done, and we have all of our paper products. We got to marinate some chicken. Every day I got to get the chicken ready, you know, get it pretty much prepped and, and marinated for the day. Usually it's, it's, it's always a rush because we try to get to our location like on time, beat traffic and beat the other trucks there. So we're ready to go. We're headed to our lunch spot over in the valley. Right now we're going to be tweeting our new location. And when we tweet it, we let all of our followers know where to find us at. All right, let's get out of here. Twitter and other social media has totally changed food trucking. One 140 character tweet can let 2,000 of your followers know where you're going to be. Food entrepreneurs have figured this out and they were like, well, we don't need to put an ad in the paper. We'll just get really aggressive with our social media strategy. So if you're sitting at your desk and you know, you're a fan of several trucks, during the day, you may get several tweets from them letting them know where they're going to be in your area, what time they're going to be there. And so it's one stop shopping. Empanadas. We found the truck on eBay. The Magic Bus is run by what you'd probably call hippies. We had to have a purple hot dog. Without meat, your life is not complete. It is definitely the next generation. They're looking for something that's not just a regular sit-down, stuffy restaurant situation. Tonight, our dinner location is First Friday, which is a massive event. Thousands of people will come down in one spot just to hang out and sample all the different trucks. <laughs>